up the hill, my vlogger. You can do it. We're all rooting for you. You're gonna get up this hill. B -b -b bike vlogger here. On my way to work today. On my way to work today. Bike commuting to work. Topic of the day. Topic of the day. Chain line. Let's stop for a second. Talk about chain line. Oh, this side of the bike. This side of the bike. So there's my bicycle chain. So this is a single speed bike. Um, chain line means how does the back part line up with the front part? Uh, just getting the sun here a little. So I have a free wheel in the back, big chain ring in the front. You want a good chain line that is straight from the front sprocket to the back sprocket. So to do that, to do that, you need to measure your back sprocket. So uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about that a little bit. <laughs> I did not even, did not even realize that there was a person sitting back there listening to me talk to myself because I'm crazy. Crazy. <laughs> so for a single speed bike, you want a chain line of approximately, usually around 42 centimeters. The chain line is measured from the center of the bicycle frame as if you were to cut it straight down the middle, outward, away from the frame to the sprocket. And usually that measurement's gonna be around 42 centimeters. It might be 41.5, 42.5, but around 42 centimeters for a single speed bike. Now, if you have a uh, bike with like, you know, two chain rings, I think they call it a double or whatever on a single sp or a multi-speed bike, your outer chain ring might be 46, 47 centimeters. The inner might be uh, a little less than 42, I think, centimeters. But anyway, this is kind of a single speed topic. Uh, chain line, but it's very important for a fixed gear bike. I'm not riding a fixed gear bike, but it's also pretty important for a single speed bike. It's a little less important with a uh, multi-speed chain or like a chain that's, what is it, 332 inch, I think is what it's called for like a six, seven, eight, nine speed chain maybe. Um, <clears throat> I'm waiting for all this traffic, yeah. All right, we're going for it. We're gonna go for it, nope. I'll wait for a few more people here. But uh, yeah, so I was trying to figure out chain line. There's things you can do to fix it if your chain line isn't perfect. And like I was saying, it doesn't have to be completely perfect. As long as it's within uh, a few centimeters, it's probably not gonna be a big issue on a, on a, a bike with a freewheel on it or a, a uh, cassette. And in terms of cassette, you'd be multi-speed anyway, but, and you're gonna be cr uh, so-called cross chaining. You shouldn't really do that generally. You should try to keep your gears in a straight chain line pretty much, even on a multi-speed bike, because it's just more efficient and uh what is that guy doing back there oh he's moving into a parking space i was trying to figure that out he stopped in the middle of the street and then he started backing up in the middle of the street and he was parallel parking that's what that was oh god okay okay here we go this away yeah so um what else is there to say about chain line so to, to adjust your chain line you got a few different options you can install a uh, bottom bracket spacer on the front for the front sprocket basically that will pop your drive side of the bottom bracket out to the right the side with the chain on it you can put a a bb spacer a bike blogger spacer on the front and push it out a little bit you know it's going to mess with your, um, you know, messing around with dimensions like that might 
you might feel it in your pedal stroke. Uh, so it's not ideal, but you can do it. It's a thing. You can buy these things. A BB spacer or a bottom bracket uh, spacer. You can also adjust the rear sprocket by using a similar thing called a freewheel spacer. Now, I will, uh, I will caution you on that though. Let's just, let's just go through here. <laughs> There's nobody around. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Bikes shouldn't be on the sidewalk. I guess I'd call this a sidewalk. Um, you can adjust the back sprocket with a freewheel spacer as long as you have enough threads uh, to pretty much thread on the, the freewheel and it's not gonna just fall off on you. Same thing with a uh, fixed cog. Now those of you who have ridden or have, a, have experience with fixed gear bikes, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, would you advise against using a spacer? on a uh, fixed cog or a fixed gear bike is that a dangerous thing to do i don't really know so that's why i'm saying be careful because <laughs> uh, a fixed gear bike you uh you can't freewheel so if something clogs up the the uh the chain or the drive train pretty much in any way it's gonna you know flip you off your bike because <laughs> the bike wants to go forward and if it gets jammed up, it's not gonna go, it's not gonna be able to freewheel. It doesn't have that capability as a fixed gear. But yeah, well, I guess we're riding a sound speed right now. So the thing that dictates chain line is I would generally say it's the rear wheel, the rear sprocket. So wherever the sprocket falls chain line wise on your frame is what your chain line should be on your bike. Um, chain line will be different depending on the bottom bracket and the crank that you use. And I'm not sure it might even depend on the frame that you're using too. Most frames are the same, but I'm trying to cover everybody here. Just to let you know there's always, there's always the oddity out there that it may not work, but generally you can contact the crank manufacturer. They might get back to you and let you know what the chain line will be. There's a thing on SRAM called frame fitting compatibility, something like that. They have diagrams of this stuff. So they will tell you there'll be a dimension on the diagram that will say like what the chain line is, or they won't call it chain line, but the dimension from the center line of the frame outboard to the uh, chain ring for their cranks and that way you can know what the chain line will be and how it's going to line up with your back wheel you can measure this with a caliper uh, measuring tape maybe easiest again you just measure pretty much from your uh, center of your frame like the down tube center of the down tube outboard to the sprocket i don't have a tape measure with me so i can't show you that right now waiting for one guy behind me here i'm gonna scooch over scooch over right into the fence and uh, right into the gate there boom we might it oh boy oh boy oh boy boy it's getting kind of cold Whew. Oh yeah, happy new year. This might be my my first video for the new year. I don't know. It's still the old year. <laughs> this is still 2021 actually. And I'm actually riding with some pretty light clothing on. Don't even have my gloves on right now. I probably should. It's good for in case you fall off the bike. Same thing goes with long sleeves. Good to have long sleeves because if you fall off the bike your skin doesn't take all of the damage when you hit the ground 
You just mess up your nice clothes. Whew. Out the hell, my vlogger. You can do it. We're all rooting for you. You're gonna get up this hill. Boy, there was some strong winds last night. 40 mile per hour, 45 mile per hour gusts. Dang. Not bad when it's a tailwind, but <laughs> it's a headwind. It's not easy to deal with. Whew. And it's real quiet back here. So yeah, what else can I say about chain line? Chain line. Sometimes you may have no choice. You just have to, you know, buy the crank and find out when you install it. One tip I will give you though, when you're installing a crank, tighten it down real tight because it might take up another few millimeters. If you don't have it on there all the way, really tight, you may not get the correct, uh, it might not be set up for the right chain line that it was, you know, manufactured for. If you're buying a single speed crank though, uh, actually, no, I take that back. I mean, I was gonna say, generally it'll probably have a 42 centimeter chain line. I was just thinking to myself, 42 centimeter, 42 millimeter. Oh, we use the old system here. Centimeter, I think I'm correct, yeah. Said so be 450 millimeters, but yeah, 42 centimeter. I guess I should stop and show you just in pictures here what I'm talking about. Oh, look, there's like an Amazon package there. Free stuff, free stuff, grab the package. Grab the package, okay, here we go. So you measure like from right in the center of the frame here, like maybe the uh, water bottle cage uh, mounting bolt outward to the cassette, or I guess I, I should say the chain ring. So an easy way of doing that, you can get a caliper or something, measure from the center here outward to the, the outside surface of the chain ring or the freewheel cog or I guess the fixed cog in the back. Get that measurement, figure out what the width, the thickness is of your chain, divide that in half, and then subtract it. And that'll give you your chain line. Did that make any sense? Do I need to put like a formula on the screen to help you guys out? It's okay, it's all right. I'm not very good at explaining things sometimes. Okay. All right, let's go this way. Let's go this way. Woo-wee. I take it back. I'm warming up now. Feels actually pretty good out here. About 50 uh, Fahrenheit. 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 That is Fahrenheit. Is that like some guy's last name or something? Probably. Let's go to this away. Let's go this way. Hey, there's another cyclist. Yeah, I was gonna say I wasn't gonna go this way anymore, but I don't know, I like going this way. Kind of feel like I'm going around and stuff and I'm avoiding stuff and I'm taking a shortcut, but I don't think I really am. Where does this go? We're exploring, let's just go. Uh, let's see where this goes back here. Oh, this doesn't go nowhere. This is a dead end. Now I know. Now I know. Now I know. Yeah, so last time I was coming through here, I was counting, uh, counting cars, right? I don't think we'll do that right now, but, oh man. I do remember coming back through here last time. It was such a nice day that day. It's a little more chilly today, I think. Still enjoying this weather though. So why do I bring all this up? Sometimes my topics just have to do with like what I'm doing at the time and I'm thinking about it. So yeah, I was thinking about chain line and getting a new crank and stuff. And uh, yeah, that, that kind of topic came across in my mind and like, 
hey that make a good uh good thing to bring up in a video maybe somebody will learn something learn from my mistakes <laughs> uh, but no i think what i was saying before or i was gonna say is sometimes you don't know till you try so you buy the bottom bracket you buy the crank you install it if it doesn't fit you know you keep the bottom bracket probably keep the crank too if you've installed it um and you just need to buy a new bottom bracket but you can use the old bottom bracket as a reference point so you know how much bigger or longer of a bottom bracket you need uh based on putting bb spacers behind the uh i guess the drive side cup or whatever you would call it uh that to push it outboard so you can get it further out in line with your back um cog now i'm talking of course single speed it's a lot different when you're talking you know if you're talking the outer chain ring on a double it's already going to be outward there's not really a way you can bring it inward i don't think is there i don't know let me know i don't think you can remove space from a bottom bracket uh assembly or spindle or whatnot i guess you can get a shorter spindle right yeah i guess you can do that but you're gonna have to basically measure out your chain line figure out how far out you are and, and how far in you need to go how much millimeters you need to subtract if the uh, bottom bracket is kind of like uh i guess even on both sides if that's the correct terminology what you could do is uh I guess buy a bottom bracket that is so much shorter divide that in half because you're gonna lose length on both sides left and right I guess I should get over right slower vehicles should be on the right Whew. beautiful day today in the neighborhood and ah, shocks making my stop I'm gonna go this way. What I can do is, uh, actually, I could have cut a, could have cut around back there. Maybe I'll do that. Ooh, we got construction up ahead. Look at that. What are they doing? They're tearing up that building. That building don't look so good. <laughs> All right, spin it back around. A lot of different ways you can get around here. It's an alleyway. So what I was gonna do is we can go. Can we go back up around this guy? Let's see. <laughs> we can go to the ATM and get us some money. Shoom. Yeah, look at that. All right. Bypass the intersection that way. Oh, there's a alleyway over there. Where does that go? I don't know. Oh man, I stopped on a hill. <laughs> Climb the hill. Climb the hill. Whew. I think I want to make a left here. I'm gonna have to wait for the light though. At least we can wait in the shade. Although it's actually not very hot right now. It's pretty much about perfect. Doo -doo -doo. So yeah, that pretty much covers it in terms of uh, chain line, I think. I don't think I left anything out. I'll leave it in the comment or in the video description below. They call it video description. That's kind of strange. I don't know if anyone uses it to really describe a video. Maybe they do. Or probably most YouTubers do now that I think about it. I use it to kind of leave a little written blog down there related to whatever I was talking about in the video. So, hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the Bike Vlogger Show. Woo!